Hello, Internet France. Hey, everyone. I am 60. Short intros seem to be the play. So remember, the more people that watch these educational videos, the better our pugs will all be. So help this video reach more people via the YouTube algorithm. Give this video a like and drop it a comment and let me know what videos you'd like to see me make in the future. This week, let's head into Spires of Ascension. Let's check out some add-ons that will clean up our user interface. A clean interface feeding us important information can help us time our Mythic Plus keys. On explosive weeks, I often find that major mechanics such as interrupting spells or dispelling important debuffs are missed. This is usually due to the fact that everyone is so focused on killing explosive orbs that they miss the mechanics. This can be readily fixed with some important add-ons. The first add-on I use that I find very helpful is called LVUI. This is a very customizable user interface overhaul, meaning that you can change every component of your user interface separately. There are some great videos on how to install and customize it. I will leave a link to one of these in the description. Let's take a look at our very first pull in the dungeon, as this has some really good examples of how a UI can make things better. Now, the first thing I want people to focus on is cast bars. With LVUI, it automatically recolors cast bars so that interruptible casts are yellow versus non-interruptible casts, which are red. With this Forsworn Goliath, it is very easy to see that he is casting Rebellious Fist, a spell that when not interrupted can do a lot of damage and potentially lead to deaths. The second thing I want people to notice is enemy debuffs. LVI does a great job of showing you what buffs the mob has that can be dealt with by your class. For example, this Forsworn Mender casts an ability called Imbue Weapon. Imbue Weapon has 5 charges and deals additional arcane damage to anyone it hits. It really hurts. On my Demon Hunter, this can be offensively dispelled by my Consume Magic ability. When dispelled, it drops this black hammer on the ground. Melee DPS or tanks can run over this hammer, which will give them a buff that deals that same arcane damage back to the mobs instead. This is a huge benefit to the team that is easily recognizable because my user interface made it so. LVI also does a great job of informing me what debuffs my team has received. This is great for dispels. On the first boss, Kintara places two debuffs on random group members. This ability is usually handled by the healer dispelling one and the other player using a defensive ability to mitigate the damage from the undispelled debuff. With LVI, you can easily see which person still has the debuff left on them and which one got dispelled. If you are a tank or DPS class with a dispel, this also helps you track players with diseases, poisons, or curses. That way, you can dispel them and help your teammates out. It also tracks bleeds, so paladins can help the team out by bopping people with bleeds, or if you're a class with an immunity, you can immune away your bleeds. LVI will also track debuffs that my allies and myself place on the mobs. For example, when my balance druid casted his AoE silence, a debuff was placed on the mob's nameplate, annotating that it is currently under the effects of silence. This allows me as the tank to know A, to keep these mobs in the silence, and B, to not cast my AoE silence. The same thing happens for slows or roots, all very useful things to know as a tank when I am kiting. The next add-on I want to talk about is weak auras. Weak auras can do so many things. In fact, you can literally track anything in this game using weak auras. But my favorite thing to track with weak auras is my teammates interrupts. This weak aura here in the top left of my screen lets me know which interrupts have been used and which are available. In Spires of Ascension, there are so many important casts that if not kicked will kill people or wipe the group. Burden of Knowledge is a very deadly ability in conjunction with Dark Lash. Knowing who has a kick available allows me to assign a player so that we don't let the spell go off. Another thing that can be tracked with weak auras is cooldowns. Knowing that my DPS have big cooldowns available can allow me to pull bigger as a tank or smaller if I can see that we have none. As a DPS, knowing that your other teammates just use their big DPS cooldowns can allow you to save yours for the next pack. Healers being able to track if your tank has run out of defensives can allow you to make informed decisions about your own CDs. That way you can keep the tank and other party members alive. I can't stress enough the importance of tracking both enemy abilities and player abilities, which leads to our next add-on, bigwigs or DBM. At this point, I don't think I know a single person without one of these two add-ons, but in case you're watching this video and you're new to WoW, I definitely recommend having this installed. I use DBM, but bigwigs is essentially the same thing. What this add-on does is that it installs trackers for every major ability and mechanic that is coming up in the encounter. For example, on the last boss, a DBM will tell me that Devos is about to cast Run Through, an ability that deals damage to anyone in front of the boss. At the start of her cast, it also plays an alert so that on the likely chance I zoned out or forgot, it grabs my attention so that I can get out of the way. The last thing I want to talk about is not an add-on, but a macro. If you're unaware of this feature inside of the game, you can script some of your abilities. In-game, press Escape, and there's a button here that says Macros. 
I have a key bind here that is a focus macro and a key bind that is a macro to target my focus, interrupt it, and then retarget my last target. This can be very useful when my priority kick target is not the same as my priority DPS target. In this pack of four mobs, the Forsworn squad leader is the priority target for DPS. It has an aura that reduces all AoE damage taken by the other mobs. However, the priority interrupt of this pack is Infernal Strife, an ability casted by the Forsworn Inquisitor. This ability deals massive damage to the target and anyone else near its AoE blast radius. Having a focus kick macro allows me to maximize DPS on the squad leader and then press one button to kick the Infernal Strife and then go right back to DPSing the squad leader for maximal uptime. All right, now my videos wouldn't be complete if we didn't go over ways to improve. This can even be the case with add-ons. We're going to look at my own gameplay today. This Spires was my first key of the week and I'm very rusty at explosives. I've been using this user interface for a while, and by the end of the week, I've usually always adapted to this interface. But my group members shouldn't suffer because I'm too lazy to adjust it. As you can see, the icons on these nameplates are taking up a huge amount of room, which is making it impossible for me to target these explosives. Because I'm focusing on explosives, I also take forever to dispel the Forsworn Mender, which causes me to take extra damage, and I forget to kick the Goliath's Rebellious Fist, which leads to my healer's death. So let's make some adjustments. We can go into LVI and adjust the sizes of these icons. Not only that, I'm going to turn off tracking of some of these debuffs because they don't affect the way I play. I'm also going to change from using these weak orders for tracking cooldowns to method raid tools. It was formerly called exorcist raid tools. MRT is an add-on that is generally used for raid, but we can also use it to track party CDs. Notice in this clip, I've switched off from these weak auras to this black box. It might be a little more unsightly for some people, but having this tracker in written form with timers is a lot more useful for my brain. Alternatively, you can use Omni CD to replace both the weak ores for cooldowns and the interrupt tracker. It has a very clean look, but unfortunately it still uses the icon method, which just isn't my preference. Improvements can also be made to our macros. In this clip, I add a target marker to my focus macro. Using mob names in a hectic fight can be very confusing to my teammates. By adding a target marker to my focus macro, I can change the way I speak to them. Changing what I say from I have next kick on Forsworn Inquisitor to I have next kick on Moon is substantially more efficient and just easier to understand. Here's a final clip of me using all of my applied changes to my UI. I found it was at least easier to see the explosives and hopefully long term, tracking my party CDs in a way that is actually useful to me can improve my gameplay overall. All right, M plus fam, I hope you folks found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing. All of my videos, I basically use the weekly affix to talk about important dungeon mechanics, um, except for the, the occasional meme video that I make. If you have any questions about any of the add-ons that we talked about in this video, please feel free to drop by our Discord and post any questions you have in our general chat. We have a lot of talented people in there that love helping. We also have an LFG channel that is popping off. If you're hoping to have a better pug experience on the Alliance side of the game, uh, definitely check it out. There's a ton of people doing keys in there all the time. All right. Have a good day and peace.